today's mission, we got to fly the TBM 850 from Atlanta, Georgia down to Miami, Florida. We got to battle some storms along the way. Let's get this started. Who's pump on? Starter's on. Starter light blinking. Ignition light is on. I'm gonna wind up a little bit. We just shut down a little bit ago. Wait for the IT to go under 150. There it is. NG is rised up and stabilized. Introduce fuel to low idle. Now we're watching for the hot start on the ITT, hung start on the NG. The reason why I let it wind up is to just cool the engine a little bit so on the whole start procedure it's not as hot. Everything's looking good. And it looks like a good start. Starter comes off. Go through our startup flow. Alright, we'll get the ATIS here at Peach Rudy Cab. Cap, Peach Street, Tower Information, Bravo, 1555 five, Zulu, wind variable at 5, visibility 10, clouds scattered 2,700, scattered 4,300, ceiling 5,000 broken. Temperature 282.21, altimeter 2990, RNIV Yankee approaching, use landing, departing runway 21 left, 21 right, IFR clearance available on 125.2. Read back all runway hold short instructions, advise on initial contact. You have Bravo. All right, we have Bravo. We'll go over to the clearance delivery and pick up our IFR clearance down to Miami. Peace Street clearance, good afternoon. November 851 Tango Bravo. Over at Signature with Bravo, looking to pick up our IFR. November 851 Tango Bravo, Peace Street ground clear to Opelika via vectors as filed. Maintain 3000. Flight level 300, 10 minutes after. Departures on 1269 or 7 and squawk 1731. Clear down to Opelika, radar vectors as filed, maintain 3000, expect 300, 10 minutes after, 2697 on departure frequency, squawking 1731, one tango bravo. One tango bravo, rear back, crack, ground attack. Thank you. Alright, we got our clearance there. We'll go now over to ground. Petri ground, November 851, tango bravo, over at signature with bravo, ray taxi, IFR. 851, tango bravo, 2 on left taxi, hotel alpha. Hotel Alpha, there are only two on the left, 851 Tango Bravo. Alright, we got our taxi one, instructions here. Just on his hand instructions out there in front of us. Roger, we'll call the Archer and uh, Monitor Tower to that pop. Thanks. I'd like to welcome everybody on board. It's a special treat to have you guys on board on the TBM today. We have uh, quite the flight here. We have a lot of big weather lined up in front of us on this route. And we have a presidential TFR down at Opelika currently, which is uh, active. So one thing, oh, Bravo, are you going to be ready at the end? We'll be ready at the end, one thing, oh, Bravo. Oh, Bravo, thanks. Monitor the tower, 120.9, good day. Monitoring tower, 851, one thing, oh, Bravo. Okay, we'll go over and monitor the tower. Flight time just over two hours from Atlanta down to Miami. A lot of hard work does go into making these videos, so I'd like to thank the Patreon crew over there at patreon.com. You get early access and I try to answer all your questions. And if you do like these videos, be sure to smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. Alright, right up here is two and left. We'll pull up to the hold short bars here and wait for their call to give us our takeoff clearance. We do have some big showers off the end of the runway down there, off to the left, to the south. Upon departure here, they're probably going to give us a right turn off of the runway. Number 851 Tango Bravo, PC Tower. Turn right, heading 250. Runway 21 left. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, 21 left. We'll turn right to 250 and heading 851 Tango Bravo. Alright, Miami, Florida, here we come.
Final is clear. Clear down the runway. We'll line up here on center line. And here we go. Hence the uh, power here for takeoff power. Takeoff power. 7478 Alpha on the RNAV 2108. Takeoff power. 7478 Alpha, Houston, runway 211, clear to land. Is set. Roll temperature pressure is all good in the green. Holding our center line here with the rudder pedals. Power to Turkey 103 Alpha. And once we get to our rotation speed, just about there. There we go. Positive rate and indicating. Tap the brakes. And we'll go gear up. Got some pretty big towers out there right in front of us. Then you guys, you can see downtown Atlanta. Good view. Adjust up to 40 miles, ready to end. We'll turn right to 250 heading. There we go, we'll roll out on the 250 heading. Adjust up to 49 feet to tower, turn left, heading 090. Runway 20 left. Flaps up, got a damper on. Give or take off, just 7 to 49. One thing about we're contacting out of park, please go trap to 12 o'clock and 4 miles of 2800 climbing to Cherokee. Roger, over departure looking for the Cherokee, 1 Tango Bravo. Land departure, November 85, 1 Tango Bravo, 1800 climb to 3250 heading. 85, 1 Tango Bravo, under departure, identify and maintain 5000, no delay. There's your flash up to 5000, no delay, 85, 1 Tango Bravo. 1 Tango Bravo, thank you, red contact to Southwest Beach Street. Yeah. Position checks, 1 Tango Bravo. All right, so we flashed them with the ident. We're doing a good 2,500 feet a minute here up to 5,000 feet. That's to keep clear of that traffic. He's under our nose right now. I couldn't even see him if I tried because we got the nose so high up in the air. And we'll put the autopilot on, climbing IS. Autopilot is on. That'll relieve some of the workload here now. Currently that traffic is 200 feet below us now, right out here in front of us. I still don't see him. 851 Tango Bravo, turn left heading 190. Left 190, one Tango Bravo. Hello. <laughs> 1,000 to go. That's 4,000, climbing to 5,000. Currently climbing out at 140 knots. One Tango Bravo turning at 200. 200, one Tango Bravo. Now come 6112, can you slow to 150? Should have a good view of Atlanta out there, Door left right wing there. All right, you're following a Cherokee uh, five mile final doing 90 knots. All right, we do have some pretty good buildups uh, right out in front and to our right. Once I get up towards this cloud, I'll pull the power back a little bit so we go through it slower. The slower you go through bumpy clouds, the less jarring it is on you. I think we're going right over downtown. So for the first part of this flight, they're going to keep us low. We're going to be uh, transitioning the Class Bravo airspace of Hartsfield, Atlanta Hartsfield International. And they'll put us probably right over the airfield, pretty close to the middle, to avoid all the uh, departures and arrivals. So here comes these clouds right here. This is going to get a little bit bumpy. I know you guys, I know you guys got your seatbelts on, so I'm not worried about you. Pull the power back a little bit here. Going through some decent uh, precip. Okay, uh, uh, keep my hand on the yoke in case the autopilot comes off. Pretty much going to box you right back around for the approach. This is, it's, it's, those guys are just too slow. No problem, understood. This airplane, uh, when it hits bad bumps, the autopilot likes to disconnect once in a while. I'm not putting pressure on the yoke, I just keep it there yeah, in case it, uh, the autopilot does, doesn't come off. I'll increase the power back. Shot of yeah, a good view off the uh, right wing of Atlanta Hartsfield. The busy airport. And right where we're at, we'll be clear of all the incoming and outbound traffic. Right now we're in the middle of the, the Class Bravo airspace. Once we get a little bit farther, now they'll give us a climb to get up to our cruise altitude. Take a look down here at the iPad on the Four Flight app. You'll see this is our routing. Proceed down to Soon, Macon, Dublin, and then uh, down the east coast of Florida. And for the Blue 4 arrival, you can see the little 
red TFR down there. That's where President Trump is currently at. So right now that is a no-fly zone where we're going to land, but that should expire an hour before we get there. If for some reason he stays longer than anticipated, we'll just go to our alternate at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport, where that's outside the 10-mile ring of the no-fly zone of the TFR. I fly this airplane to TBM as my full-time job. It's a really exciting job. I mean, today's going to be a pretty challenging flight, getting around all the storms to the south. We pan out here, you'll see. We got all kinds, of, I mean, the lightning is so much over the panhandle, it all blends in together. So we're gonna try to get to the east of all that and uh, go down the east coast of Florida. And then we have also storms down around Miami. So today's just gonna be a challenging flight all together. One Tango Bravo, climb and maintain 6,000, drop heading 150. 150 up to 6,000, if I want Tango Bravo. One Julia Papa Squawk 7134. Yeah, it's bumpy. Alright, 150 on the heading bug. 6,000 set in the altitude pre selector. Popping in and out of these clouds. Always fun when you get to fly through these clouds like this. Actually, remind you you're flying. Yeah, if you guys would like to become a pilot, whether it's either for fun or professionally, be sure to check out my friend Jason Shepard, M0A.com. I got a link in the description. He runs a good online ground school that'll help guide you through getting your ratings. November 5, 6, 1, Charlie, Definitely is a rewarding career to have flying airplanes. 851 Tango Bravo, climb and maintain 11000. 11000, 1 Tango Bravo. 11000 set in our Delta II pre selector, and we'll VS that up 3,000 feet a minute. We'll actually go into 850 mode now. Now that we're clear class Bravo, we can increase our speed. The flap lever up and over the gate. And we're going to actually turn off our inertial separator too. Just a little switch down by my left knee. Now we'll get more air into the engine. We'll see how this goes. I mean, you now if we don't like the look of this uh, routing, we can't get down to Miami. You know, we'll just go to an alternate and hang out and uh, continue the flight later tonight when this weather clears up. You gotta stay flexible, you know, and get get there right as, and get yourself into trouble. Charge, and we'll start to adjust our pressurization. Bravo Have Bravo plan on two one left. Uh, or now to get ready for our cruise altitude. So right now we got a VS to three thousand feet a minute. The airplane can't hold that, so the airspeed bleeds off. Seven two one Julia Pop. As we hit one hundred forty knots, ah yes, now the airplane is just going to keep pitching and hold one forty. That we won't have to worry about the airplane stalling out. 1,000 to go, out of 10,000 feet. Reduce speed to 150. There we are, leveling off at 1,000. If you look out the front window there, you're going to see we have lots of big clouds out there. That's all those storms. I'm really not looking forward to this flight, to tell you the truth. TVM 1 Tango Bravo, contact Atlanta Center, 134.5, good day. 134.5, 1 Tango Bravo, enjoy your day. Atlanta, good afternoon, TVM 851 Tango Bravo, 1,000, 150 heading. A51 Tango Bravo, Atlanta Center, making out 10 minutes, 9 or 9 or 0. 9 zero. And we're actually going to get the uh, onboard weather radar warmed up, which is the little ball out there at the uh, left wing. That's where the onboard weather radar is, and it sweeps out in front of the plane. It's usually good, accurate about 40 miles out in front of the plane. One Tango Bravo, fly hitting 1 Tango Bravo. So yeah, you may be asking, what kind of headset are you wearing, Steve? So this headset is the new Rose Pro Flight Series 2. At the time of filming this, it has not even been announced to the public yet. Yeah, so you are obviously watching this in the future where I'm allowed to share. If you look at the notes, I've got an email here of all the different new things. It's got a thin and flexible cable. The cable's lighter. It actually, it's 4.5 ounces. Yeah, they're not as quiet as A20s, but they are significantly quieter than a lot of headsets. And when I like to wear hats when I fly and stuff, it's nice because it doesn't break uh, the ear seal of the, of the normal headsets. One Tango Bravo, climbing maintain one five thousand. One five thousand, one Tango Bravo. All right, one five thousand set up, three thousand feet a minute. Here we go. Yeah, it's exciting to be able to try out this new Bros Pro Flight Two. Uh, let you know right now, it seems like it's doing a pretty good job. I mean, it's a real lightweight on the head. I mean, I thought the new, the Pro Flight 1 was light. This is even lighter. Number 851 Tango Bravo, I'm showing scattered areas of moderate to extreme precip north of the Alma VR. 
Deviation is right, of course, is approved, and when you're able, clear direct to Ormond Beach. That's right, deviation approved when able, direct to Ormond Beach, 851 Tango Bravo. Let's take a look here. Go to map. Well, let's go to Ormond Beach. Flight plan, direct to Ormond, direct, enter, enter, let's see where that puts us. Number one, Tango Bravo, climb and maintain flight number one, nine or zero. Climb and maintain flight one, nine, zero, one, Tango Bravo. I honestly don't like any bit of this. I don't even want to go in that direction. It's just, uh... Delta 10 to 50, contact Atlanta Center, 119. So much point three seven. Delta 10 to 50, 1937. Yeah, see, they want me to go yeah. over here. No way. I'm going to go over this direction, all the way to the east. Atlanta, no, uh, Ray Five One Tango Bravo. What? I'd actually like to proceed, probably, like, on a 110. I'd like to go all the way over to the east coast and down to the east coast of Florida. A51 Tango Bravo, uh, yeah, we had uh, aircrafts going that way earlier, but once you get uh, about 80 miles to the east and head southbound, it's going to be a long line of weather that's south of um, Alma that you're going to run into. So they're thinking the weather's moving east, so they told us the best uh, plan of attack is to go around the back side of it. Uh, man, that's not good news, guys. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. around the back side of it. So it's moving east. Oh boy. So I guess they're saying we'll go over here to the uh, Gulf of Mexico is where we're going to go. But I mean, it's all just solid line over there. I don't know. One Tango Bravo, climb and maintain flight number 230. 230, one Tango Bravo. This is one of those times when it's just like, what do you do? I'm honestly stumped. I'm just going to get closer to this, and if I don't like the look of it, I'll do a U-turn and land on the north side of this weather. So they're not really letting me do what I wanted to do, even though from what I see, it would be a lot easier to just go out over the coast over here, proceed down the uh, east coast. Right now they're telling me to go behind it, but look, at it, it's all red, cells and lightning all behind it. I don't know. So our plan right now is we're just going to proceed over this direction and when we get closer, I'll, we're painting a solid line or anything, I will uh, I'll just do a U-turn and land somewhere up here and wait it out. Better to be safe than sorry. We'll try to make it happen, but if it does not look good, we will go back on the ground. Willingly. <laughs> further down the road here. We got a new route. Uh, we got a reroute down the west coast. We take a look down here at the uh, Fort Flight app. Oh, this is our new reroute. We have one gap that we got right out here in front of us. And we're going to proceed down Nikki, Indu, Julie for the Scott 5 arrival into Miami. We're on board with Jacksonville. If you look here, we got one gap. And it's straight ahead. Exactly. It's not a very wide gap. They're telling me other airplanes have been able to get through this. That doesn't mean we're going to be able to get through this. We're about to go IMC conditions where we're not going to be able to see out the window, which is going to make this more difficult to uh, navigate. The one thing with the onboard weather radar is, you know, it's painting straight out in front of the plane. But you got a, a 41 knot crosswind, so we're actually crabbed through the air right now. So what we paint out directly in front of us is not really where we're going. We're really going over this direction. So the front of the airplane right now is right over here to the left. You got to remember that when you're uh, looking at your onboard radar, uh, when you get a strong crosswind, you're actually flying sideways through the air. So what is painting right out really in front of us? is actually over to the right more, to so where we're going. So in this case, Frontier is, uh, taken. I want to err to having anything on the left side of the airplane 
is where we're going to be looking at. We're looking over on the more the left side of the radar because that's the direction we're really tracking across the ground. United 776, stand by. So we're going into IMC conditions now. I'm just hoping this hole holds up for us. I mean, and you look at the onboard next red, it's just massive this storm. And then we got one little hole right here. A lot of times they'll call it a sucker hole. Zero twenty two eighty, like turn on course, uh, move direct. I'm hoping this is not one of them. We'll go back to our onboard weather radar. Since I can't see out the windows anymore. Painting one cell right there to the right. But like I said, we're actually tracking more of this direction. Off to the left side of that radar. Due to the forty five now and not crosswind. So we're crabbed. So we got our seatbelts on. They're telling me that other airplanes have made it through. Even though it's good to hear, but like I said, just because another airplane made it through doesn't mean It'll be the so same conditions as when we go through. So let's uh, decrease the ring was, uh, here. One, two, We're five, showing one, seven for eight, eight, 30 miles to the right, gap. All right. So we'll take the, uh, the ring and put it to a 40 mile. You're completely unreadable. Got the 2280, how now? Ring. There's that storm. Got the That's probably the leading edge of the, uh, three zero the red zero. over here. Three zero zero. Over this direction is really where we're going. The wind was coming off to the left. We'd then be crabbing this direction. So you'd be looking towards the right-hand side of that radar. If you look off the right wing there, you'll see we do have some precip hit in the airplane. If I didn't feel confident going through this, I would have not have done it. But I feel, do feel confident. Back a while ago, I was not feeling confident, but I, I knew we had time to make a judgment call. I got to give it to the uh, Atlanta controllers. I originally wanted to go over to the east coast and down. Um, we had to go fairly far out over the coast of the ocean to get around this. The only problem is, is if you look, severe thunderstorms all the way down the coast. Now the problem is if if you're single, you know, we're single engine. If we have any issue out here over the ocean, we can't get to any airport along that whole coastline, probably we're within 200 miles, because it's all heavy, extreme uh, thunderstorms. So, if we were out over the ocean, we'd have been in, a wa in the water. So, I'm glad that we actually went to the west. That was a good call. Thank you, 155 to Thank you Atlanta Controller, for helping me make that decision. We'll zoom back in here. See, so we're right up at the line. We got our gap. Please. Next red here is currently uh, doing, five uh, minutes old now. We so a lot can happen in five we'll minutes. That's, fine. That's why we're going to go back to our onboard ra weather radar just to make sure nothing's developing here in front of us. This is real time. The other one is, you know, that's five minutes old, the other X red. See, now I can't see if there's cumulonimbus in front of us or anything because, you know, we have zero visibility. So we may hit some bumpy air here. You never know. Actually, looks like we're starting to break through. Without this hole, there's no way we would have been getting through here today at this altitude. Like the airliners, they're a little bit higher. We're at 30, 29,000 feet right now. Service ceiling is 31,000. Airliners can get hopefully above this stuff. Those pilots got a little bit easier. But we're down in it. I can start to see out here in front of us. I can see above the clouds. Doesn't look like anything bad, so that's good news. There it is. I would just say we are officially through that gap. We should break out here any minute. That was a, a very intimidating line of storms. We had a good job on the Atlanta controllers and the Jacksonville controllers today. They're really assisting and helping pilots make the correct decisions on where to go. So now we'll just be going down the west coast of Florida. In the pan mode now, here's where we're at. We'll scroll down. And we'll go down the west coast of Florida. Looks like the storms end around Orlando. And then uh, uh, down in South Florida, I believe we're going to have to contend with a few more storms. Let's see, now we've got one by Lake Okeechobee. For the most part, unless this really develops, we should be good to go. As you can see out front now, we just have some high overhang, but we have made it through that hole. All right, so we'll continue on down the route here. Get back with you just in a little bit on the arrival.
back with you a little farther down the arrival. Basically going direct uh, cubic at this time. We got a crossing restriction, which is on the arrival cubic intersection at 6,000 feet. Yeah, I gotta admit, this uh, the Bose Pro Flight 2 here worked well. It uh, seems like the earbuds go into your ears a lot easier compared to the first one that I had. Uh, the noise cancellation, I believe, is a little bit better. And, you know, there's 0.4 ounces less on weight compared to the first Pro Flight. And you really feel it. Like, this headset stays on really, uh, it doesn't move around at all. It all really stays put, and you barely even feel that there's a headset on your head. Yeah, so far, first flight with it, I've enjoyed using it. I've briefed and got all set up for the RNAV 9 left approach is what they were advertising on the A to set up We have information Oscar. TBMA for one second Bravo Connect Miami approach 133.77. Let her know you got Cubic Opalaka. 3377 will advise 851 Tango Bravo. Have a good day. Okay, you too. Good afternoon, Miami. No, 851 Tango Bravo, 8,000 for 6,000 over Cubic. And after that, we were given direct Opalaka. TVNA 51 Tango Bravo, Miami approach. Expect runway 9 left for Palaka, it is Oscar. Roger, we got Oscar, we'll expect 9 left, 1 Tango Bravo. We're almost going to speed limit here, guys. Delta uh, 17. We're uh, under 10,000 feet, and we're doing about 245 Delta. knots, if you can see over there. Delta 5878, center maintain 4,000. 250 4, knots is the speed limit under 10,000 feet. November 1 Tango Bravo, contact approach 128.6. 286, 1 Tango Bravo, have a good day. Also, I feel like the mic picks up a lot easier with this Pro Flight 2. I don't know how it sounds for you guys. Sound good to you? Feels like it really picks up my voice. Easy. Miami, mean, good afternoon. TVM 851 Tango Bravo 6000. 851 Tango Bravo, Miami approach. Center maintain 1600 when able direct OK. Center 1600, direct OK, 851 Tango Bravo. Zero. Better pull the power back a little bit here. We're uh, going to be going into these clouds. And like I stated earlier, the faster you're going, the more violent the bumps will be. Not too bad. We're out over the middle of the departure Florida Everglades. Two for three. Two to Miami departure. Radar There's a lot of nothing down there. You'll see different uh, fish camps out there. We'll keep our power back in now. Just uh, We will not exceed that 250. That's our speed limit. You guys, that's your job. You guys get to keep an eye on that for me. Make sure I don't right break any speed limits. Yeah, some flights are more challenging than others. This one definitely was challenging. I feel like we made all the right decisions. Number one, Tango Bravo, you're seven miles from Ocane. Cross Ocane 1,800, cleared out of Army, and I love to approach. Just want to confirm, you said Cross Ocane 1,800, we're giving down 1,600. One Tango Bravo. Correction, 1,600, cleared out of Army, and I love to approach. Roger, we'll cross Okina 1600 and clear for the ILS 9 left approach, no, rate 51 Tango Bravo. You just made a little slip up there. You always just want to confirm, you know, just make sure everybody is on the same page. Since we're clear for the approach, we're going on the approach. If you look down here at the iPad, at 4 flight, you'll see there's our little icon coming in on the approach. Head right towards Okina. A cool little feature. There's good situational awareness showing you right where your airplane is on the approach. All right, so here is OK. Now the airplane's going to turn on to the final approach course. And there the airplane goes, doing exactly what it's supposed to do. November 1, Mike Zulu. Turn left heading 270. You're following traffic on the straight end. November 1, Tango Bravo, contact Opalaga Tower, 134.67. 3467, 1 Tango Bravo. Enjoy your day. Guitar, November 851 Tango Bravo on the RNAV 9 left approach. 851 Tango Bravo, block to tower, uh, reduce to final your number 2 air commander uh, 90 on a 2 mile left base. Roger, reducing our speed, 851 Tango Bravo. Then our flap speed, flaps set. If you look out there in the wing, you'll see him coming down. Selected. Uh, Papa Charlie. And. 690 Papa Charlie, from Indicating. And we'll go gear 90, down. Papa Selected. Contact Miami departure upgrade. All right, time to go to work. Bingo, all the way down at 258 feet on this approach. Yep. Just want to confirm, 851 Tango Bravo, clear to land, nine left. 851 Tango Bravo, affirmative. Clear to land, land left, 851 Tango Bravo. All right, I never heard cleared to land. Six south, got a TBM, sure. Take the autopilot off. 
Uh, we got a right crossing on yeah, this. It's pretty good. Minute there and get one short so we're going to hold the crab. You can see the crab angle we've got right now. The airplane's flying a little sideways. And when I get into the flare is when we're going to kick in the rudder and straighten it out. So you can see the windsock over there to the left of the runway. So back to flight idle, left rudder. The right wheel always touches down because that's the direction the wind's coming from. So this is the opposite direction. The left wheel would touch down first. And we'll go back into beta with the... Tango Bravo, welcome back. Turn right when able and uh, contact ground, we'll see you. Right, go into ground, A5-1 Tango Bravo. All right, since that guy saw him hold chart, we'll get off the yeah, Foxtrot here. Two, he wants to get his takeoff clearance, so we'll be a king here to port and port vacate the runway quicker for him. All right, welcome Pardon to Miami, guys. Watch for the king here. Number 6 Hotel Foxtrot, runway 9 left quicker. So across the hold short bars here and contact ground. Walk ground of an A51 Tango Bravo clear, 9 left on Fox Strike, and you go to signature. Of an A51 Tango Bravo, all flight here ground, taxi via November, November 6th, the signature. November, November 6th in the ramp, A51 Tango Bravo. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. If you look down here at the iPad, you'll actually see there we are, blinking away. Went down the taxiway. That flight definitely was intimidating for me. I'm glad that everything worked out like it was supposed to. All right, this is Signature right up here in front of us. I see our marshalers already out there waiting for us. Hope you guys are all doing well wherever you're watching from. Just follow his hand instructions in. Turn off our taxi light. All right, he's telling us to come forward. As soon as those batons cross, we are done. Mission accomplished. There we go. Talk to you again someday soon.